For today, we're just going to unpack one word. So in the unlikely case that someone asks you, what was Mass about today? You can answer, it was about tradition. The word of the day is tradition, capital T and lowercase t. Because near the end of our first reading from the book of Deuteronomy, we heard it said that these teachings of ours are for us and our children. And the last line of the gospel today, Jesus says, behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. And that means tradition. And that is such a wonderful little word. It's a very Catholic word, by the way. Uh, and as luck would have it, I have read a fantastic explanation of what tradition is by G.K. Chesterton, who's one of my favoriteest authors of all time. According to Chesterton, tradition is democracy. Tradition is democracy over time, and it gives a vote to that underprivileged and often oppressed class of people that we call the dead. Tradition is where our experiences come together with the experiences of our ancestors. That is what tradition is. And I love that explanation of tradition as democracy over time. And I love it because there are three basic truths that you can get out of that. One, tradition is basically a good thing. And when it comes down to it, it's advice given <coughs> through the ages by people that had wisdom to share. Second basic thing you can get from that, the value of tradition is remarkably compatible with our other values in life. We are all, we all belong to the United States of America. So we all have a basic faith in democracy as the cornerstone of our system of government. Tradition is not that different. And the third basic truth, tradition is not ironclad. It is not a system of old rules that cannot be altered or changed or, dare I say, questioned. Absolutely not. That is not what tradition is. Just like in democracy, if a law can get voted in, it can get voted out at any point in the future. That's not easily done, but it happens. Just so in tradition. We can have an individual tradition run its course and be retired. And we can do that while respecting tradition in a general sense. If you want a, an example of what I'm talking about, I'll remind you that a few hundred years ago, it was unthinkable to read the Bible in English. Um, not too long ago, the priest would face away from you during the Eucharistic prayer. We were all supposed to face the same direction. And you know what? The way a priest dresses changes every generation. I know that because I own clothes from the last generation style, and I look <coughs> ridiculously awesome, but still a little ridiculous. <laughs> I'm going to take that as you agree with me. Okay, now, that is G.K. Chesterton's take on tradition. I'm going to guess that some of you older folk really enjoyed that. But I'm pretty darn sure I've confused a number of the younger people today. So allow me to try again for their sakes. Tradition is something your grandma or your grandpa does. It is something that they value, it's important, and it somehow defines who they are as people. If that applies, if you can think of something about your grandma or your grandpa like that, they will want that thing to continue in your life, if at all possible. Because every grandparent here, and I mean every grandparent here, wants the best part of their life to be enjoyed by their children and their grandchildren. It's a link between you and them. And that link will remain even after they're gone. And that is the beauty of tradition, to hold something special from the past. And I gotta tell you, I never understood how wonderful that essence of tradition felt like 
until it was accidentally jammed into my chest by my mom. Let me explain what that means. Now see, I am a dancer. I have been since my freshman year of college when I started ballroom dancing with my friends. And some other people in my family dabble here and there, but I think it's fair to say that I'm the most enthusiastic dancer of the family, and I remain so today. Well, randomly, when I started, started up, when I was at home, my mom just came out of the blue and said, you know, Justin, I am so happy that you've taken to ballroom dancing the way you have. You are just like your grandfather. And that was a weird thing for my mom to say, because my grandfather, for my entire life, was a feeble old man. Um, I mean, he, he, had, he could not get from the car to the front door without help. Um, I literally never saw my grandfather move quickly or gracefully. But it turns out that my grandfather was a heck of a salsa dancer back in his day. He was fantastic at it until uh, health problems limited his mobility before I was born. Sadly, it put an end to that part of his life. But until then, he loved it, and no joke, he met my grandmother at a dance. So me, being the punk teenager that I was, and in some ways still am, uh, I, I, I didn't have a clue. I had no idea that was a part of my grandfather. And when my mom explained that chunk of family history, and when I let it sink in, I gotta tell you, I was beaming with delight. Because from that moment on, my dancing took on new meaning. It felt like my interest got a stamp of approval from the Holy Spirit. It felt like my love of dancing had always been meant to be a part of me. It was like it was in my blood now. Now, mind you, when I'm dancing at a wedding reception, I'm not thinking about my grandpa. I don't need to. It's an, in, it's an intuitive grace, okay? It's, it's, it's something that's good that I don't need to think about anymore. And I'll tell you, every once in a while, I get an occasional person that comes up to me and says, you're not supposed to be dancing now that you're a priest. <laughs> I don't even flinch. Like my grandfather, I'm going to dance until my legs actually give way underneath me. And then we'll see. <laughs> but spiritually, my grandfather has my back, and he always will. Okay, that was quite a tangent. Let's get back to the gospel. <laughs> Jesus Christ says, I will be with you always until the end of the age. And that means, well, I mean, the whole Trinity is promising that through Jesus. But what that means is it's not just about a personal experience. It's not just you and Jesus. It's you and Jesus and the entire world. And Jesus, for his part, will continue to care for us. He will guide and protect us year after year, century after century, generation after generation, like he always has. But for our part, we are expected to care for Christ year after year, century after century, generation after generation. And how do we do that? Caring for one another by taking these teachings and giving them to somebody else. Take these teachings and drill them into your children, at home and abroad, whether you are busy or at rest. That's a, another line from Deuteronomy, by the way. But take this collected treasure of wisdom and give it to someone. Teach someone how to care for the poor, how to be honest with God. Teach them the immense, lo the immense value of confession, forgiveness, loyalty, and honor. That is your job, to give somebody else what they need to meet Christ in their life the way you have in yours. So if you've got children, teach your children. If you've got students, teach your students. If you don't have either of those, I recommend starting with your nieces and nephews, maybe your friends, co-workers, whatever. Give them, whoever it is, give them something good. Give them something useful. And give them something that will survive even after you're gone. Do that and you will have handed on tradition. I wish I could say all this 
as if it came with a guarantee. It doesn't. Free will can be a pain sometimes. But if it does work out, if you do succeed at passing on the essence of the gospel of Christ, I hope then at least you can rest easy because your individual wisdom is unique and precious and it will echo through others with Christ until the end of the age.